Hey, Miles here again at Tackle Hive. Today's video, I want to revisit something that I mentioned in a previous video. When I talked about chin welds and cheek welds, I touched upon how stock placement can vary. There's not necessarily one way to do things when it comes to placing your stock on your body, this attachment point. So if you're interested in learning more about that, stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So as I mentioned, we're gonna be talking about stock placement in this video. Some people have the stock really high here. Some people have it buried in the shoulder pocket. Some people have it closer to the center line. You know, which one is right, which one is wrong. So I'm gonna be diving into that and kind of sharing the common threads that you're gonna hear in the industry or when you talk to other different instructors out there. But before I get into it, we wanna thank Dry Fire Mag for bringing you today's video. Dry fire mag is the automatic resetting trigger that you can use on striker fired pistols, just like you see right here. So instead of racking the slide, this makes for a more efficient and more enjoyable dry fire practice. And it is a great way to work your trigger manipulations. And when it comes to accuracy, a lot of shooters know that manipulating your trigger is going to be key to shooting fast and accurately. So the dry fire mag is something that can really help you do just that. And if you're interested in getting a dry fire mag, you can also get our online course, Mastering Trigger Control. All the details are below. Now let's get to the video. All right. You have probably learned, if you've gone to rifle classes, to put your butt stock in your shoulder pocket. And that, you know, nothing wrong with that whatsoever, okay? I'm not gonna talk about body so much here. I'm just gonna talk about the actual contact point here. This is, you know, there's nothing wrong with this here, but you may have seen other people do this, where it's a little bit higher. And let's discuss those two placements first. Traditionally, as I discussed, this is probably what you've learned. And this is great if you are going to, if you require the most steadiness, the, the best recoil management you could possibly get with your skill set with your rifle. And if you were taking fast shots, longer distances, you really need all of that recoil management. So for example, if I was engaging targets 50, 75 yards away, I need to have as stable of a platform as possible and the best recoil management so I can take shots sooner. So if I, if I didn't have this in the pocket, perhaps a little bit higher here, maybe, the, maybe my muzzle barrel starts moving this, like this. I'm exaggerating. Maybe it's gonna move really, really high here. But if I was in the shoulder, had a shoulder in the shoulder pocket here, perhaps the movement will be much less. So that means my chances of taking faster and more accurate shots down range at further distances is going to be much higher. So if you see someone here crouch like this, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that here. Okay, they have in the shoulder pocket. Maybe they, in this situation, calls for it. They need that. They 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 need to shoot fast. They need good recoil management. Now let's take the flip side here, okay? Let's, let's look at some of the instances or some ways that that might not be perfect for every situation. So if I'm crouched down like this, having in my shoulder pocket here like this, this might be good for situations, engaging far, whatever it might be, okay? And, and don't take what I'm saying as black and white. There's always going to be certain situations where there'll be bleed over in, in different circumstances. But here, this might be uncomfortable for certain people. And we talked about in a previous video, what if you were on nods too, night vision here. If I'm on night vision, I can't do this here because my night vision, my goggles would hit my optic here. So if I want a more natural posture, and when you talk to a lot of people who operate, when they are doing CQB within a house, a lot of them, I'm not gonna say all of them, but a lot of them favor, and you'll see this in a lot of videos, that stock placement is much, much higher. Why? It is more natural for them because people are standing up, they're looking around, everything's moving fast here. So they're going through doors, entering structures, and it's just more natural to be walking around like this rather than crouch down. And so in this instance here, this might be all the recoil management you need, all the contact that you need with your body. Why? If you're doing CQB or close quarters battle, the engagement distances are much, much closer, much nearer. So you don't necessarily need the ideal recoil management, particularly, let's say there was a, a threat 10 yards away from you, you could literally shoot like this without any contact with the buttstock and you're still going to be successful. Chances are you will be. 
So in a structure, when things are fast, happening fast, and your potential threats are up close, this is the technique that a lot of people favor versus going around a structure this way here, deep into the pocket. So that is one of the clear positives to placing the stock just like this. In a CQB environment, it's keeping your body natural, your, kind of your, your, your posture upright. The downside is that it is not the ideal stock placement if you want to shoot as fast and accurately as you possibly can. Why? Because the buttstock here, this is this is the entire area here. If you have some of this stock exposed, yes, you might take that force with the shoulder and that contact point here at the bottom of the shoulder, okay? But there's also a chance that this can ride up the muzzle because now there's nothing here. There's no solid backing here. So if you try to shoot as fast as you possibly can or from maybe from far away or you're trying to engage threats from far away, I should say, then there's going to be more movement. So it's going to be slower and potentially less accurate. So those are two different stock placements that are very common and often debated. But here at Tactical Hive, it's really not debated. It's just there's certain situations where you're going to use one over the other. Now, I wanted to discuss a third stock placement, which is less common for a lot of people. But if you shoot a lot, then it is going to be something that you've been exposed to. And that is placing the butt stock close to your center line right here under the chin. I'm not necessarily going to be bringing it to my shoulder pocket. It's right here by the clavicle bone, center line right here. And I could still get my red dot, see it. I can still get a good cheek weld or chin weld. If you see the previous video, you know what I'm talking about. There's two different welds here, touch points, either the chin or the cheek. And the reason why a lot of people will also do this is that there's less chance of your rifle. I'm gonna point the rifle at you. There's less chance of that recoil impulse going right or left, okay? Because notice, if I'm bladed a little bit like this and I take a shot, there's a chance of my rifle going to the right. If I'm center line here, squared with here, that recoil impulse is going directly backwards into a wall. And the whole idea there is that there will be less movement in your muzzle, so that means you can shoot faster and you'll be more accurate. People who generally shoot that way in a professional setting, those who operate, generally are also engaging targets further away, a little bit further away, we're not talking great distances here, but they are looking for the utmost recall management and the most accuracy at speed as they possibly can. And the whole idea is this is gonna be the most stable backing that you can get. Yes, your shoulder pocket can be very stable too, but there's that chance of, like I just showed you, you could start to begin to blade a little bit. And this is just going to be a steady wall here, okay? And I'm exaggerating, let's say if it was just center line right here, okay? So I'm facing you here. Notice if I turn to the left, look where the muzzle is gonna go. It can go left here. If I go to the right, it goes to the right, okay? so. If I'm right in the center, that recoil impulse is straight back, less movement in the muzzle. I hope this video helps clarify why you might see people use different stock placements. And I'm sure there's a lot more variations out there. Those are the three major ones that you see a lot though. And there's a time and place for all three of them. So don't think one is necessarily better than the other, maybe for certain situations, but overall, not necessarily, because again, it just kind of depends. I hope you guys like this video. As always, if you like the video, please let us know by giving us a thumbs up. If you have questions, leave in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.